Hello brothers and sisters, it is the Remnant Warrior, and we are going to be doing the second part of our documentary from last week, and I hope you guys enjoyed last week's, because this week is going to pick up pretty much where we left off last week, except for it's going to be focusing on the secrets of the Knights Templar, and other luciferian belief systems and societies and i want you guys to know that i'll probably be using the same uh voice filter that i used last week and i hope that's okay i am of course referring to this voice filter right here i hope that it doesn't bother you in any case, know that the things we're talking about today, we are not glorifying. We are just giving the facts. And we're giving the facts in order to expose these things and glorify Jesus Christ. Let's get this show started. In secret societies, there are always two doctrines. One for the initiated and one for the profane or uninitiated. This was the case with the Knights Templar, who had an inside esoteric or occult doctrine, and the other was the exoteric, which was presented to the outside, and that was Catholicism. The public masses received a version of the religion which lacked an understanding of the deeper symbolic meaning, so therefore it was just the outer veneer of the faith. To the cult insiders or adepts, Lucifer, which was translated to light bear in Latin, was not detested but revered and in some versions considered a son of Aurora, the Latin word for dawn and personification of an earlier Proto-Indo-European goddess called Eos to the Greeks and Hossos to the Aryans. Her origins stretch into prehistory, but we know she was associated with the rising of the sun, likely rode a chariot pulled by horses. We know she was beautiful, a symbol of love and insatiable sexual desires, as well as fertility and eternal rebirth. Her name means East, which to the Anglo-Saxons is Ostra or Istra, the Old English word for April, which was celebrated with the feast in her honor. The Spring Festival, it remained associated with fertility and birth or rebirth in the mysteries. The modern symbols of Easter, such as eggs, rabbits, and flowers, are relics of this ancient association with fertility and new beginnings. In Old German, the name of April was Astarmana. The goddess was Astara, a pagan holiday that celebrates the spring equinox. Catholicism is based, in large part, on pre-Christian mystery schools. For example, the seven sacraments are similar to the seven initiations in Mithraic mysteries which also had Eucharist and baptism. So, in an astrotheological context, 
Lucifer is associated with the planet Venus, which in Greek mythology is Sparos in the evening, son of the dawn goddess Eos, or Aurora to the Romans, and half-brother of her other son, Phosphorus, the morning star, which is also a term used to describe Lucifer. In Revelation 22-21, Jesus identifies himself as the morning star. I'm a Christian, sir. I'm pure and virtuous and wholesome and innocent. How can you say anything about it about me? Sir, you need to be born again. Is I that, am born again. Is that, now, did you just say that you are Lucifer? I am Lucifer. Okay, define Lucifer for me. Pure, virtuous, wholesome, innocent individual that's out to help people. Lucifer is? Yeah. Lu mm -hmm. Say that again. Lucifer is a pure, holy... Virtuous. Virtuous. Now, see the Lucifer that God created? That's the same one. Oh, man, this is great. I'm going to put this on the Internet. Oh, Amen. God bless you, Amen. brother. Because that's exactly what the Shriners and Masons teach, is that Lucifer, Lucifer is light. What? No. And you're, what you're about confirming those hospitals? It. They, you know, they, they you know what, sir? Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did not we did not do these good deeds in your name. And you'll say, away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Jesus said it? In Matthew chapter 5. Mercy. No. That's hard to believe. So you're a Christian and you don't know that. Actually. No, I really am. You are. Because so, I'm pure and virtuous. You're pure and virtuous. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're perfect without Jesus, right? No, 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 no. Okay. Tell me about Jesus. Who is Jesus? Oh. Right. He's he's my leader. Is he the son of God? Yes, he is. Is he the only worshipful master? Yes. Have you ever been called worshipful master? No, because I, I've just been too busy. I've been working. Working. Been working to help people. What like kind you. of work? Okay. Get out of here. Mm. See, this is what a mason confesses, is that Lucifer is light. They are probably going to come get me for this one. Hence, all the cop cars and helicopters and everything else flying towards me to come and get me. But if you ever had any doubt what the masons believed, there you just heard it. And if you ever had any doubts what the Roman Catholics believe, here, take a good look and listen to this. Flamas Eus, Lucifer Matutinus Inveniat. Ive in quam Lucifer, quin esit casum, Christus filius tuus, qui regressus ab inferis, Humano generis serenus iluxit, et tecum vivit et regnat in secula seculorum. Lucifer was a journal published in 1889 by Madame Helena Blavatsky founder of the Theosophical Society. The journal published articles on philosophical, scientific, and religious topics, including the Kabbalah, which Blavatsky insisted was part of an ancient mystery passed down since remote antiquity, long before it re-emerged as Jewish mysticism. Quote, The mysteries of the Jews were identical with those of the pagan Greeks, who took them from the Egyptians, who borrowed them in their turn from the Chaldeans, who got them from the Aryans, the Atlanteans, and so on, far beyond the days of that race. Composed towards the end of the 13th century, the Zohar emerged in southern France and Spain as a foundational text of Jewish mysticism, which among other things facilitated a way of understanding the esoteric context of passages in the Bible. The 12th century was a century of the Crusades, when thousands of men from all over Europe were leaving for the Holy Land. It was the century which saw the dissemination of the Grail legends throughout Europe, 
Incidentally, Europe is named after Europa, a Phoenician princess from Tyre, a city located just 12 miles from the modern border of Israel. The Templars believe that they descended from bloodlines that fled into Europe after the destruction of the Temple, and part of their crusade while reclaiming territory in the Levant had to do with retrieving esoteric Kabbalistic doctrines allegedly hidden below the Holy Temple. Besides their famous Red Cross, they revered another sacred magical symbol, allegedly passed down to Solomon from the Aryan Magi, or magicians, that were rumored to have helped him build the first temple. The Knights Templar were accused of worshipping an idol known as Baphomet, which is a word that reveals its true esoteric meaning when written in Hebrew and interpreted with what is known as the Atbash cipher, where the first letter of the alphabet is substituted for the last, the second for the second last, and so on. When applied to the word Baphomet in Hebrew, which is written from right to left, it reads as the Greek word Sophia, that translates into wisdom in English. As for the goat head associated with Baphomet, it is simply symbol the zodiac sign affiliated with Saturn, who rules over the latter part of the year during harvest time and Saturnalia, or what has come to be known as Christmas. We still see the Yule goat in many parts of Europe around the winter solstice, symbolic of spiritual rebirth. That's why Satanist Aleister Crowley said this. The devil is historically the god of any people that one personally dislikes. This serpent, Satan, is not the enemy of man, but he who made gods of our race, knowing good and evil. He bade know thyself and taught initiation. He is the devil of the Book of Thoth, and his emblem is Baphomet, the androgyne, who is the hieroglyph of arcane perfection. He is therefore life and love. But moreover, his letter is Ein, the I, so that he is light, and his zodiacal image is Capricornus, that leaping goat whose attribute is liberty. That said, Sophia was worshipped as the goddess of wisdom by the ancient Gnostics. In a Kabbalistic context, internal wisdom, or gnosis, means knowledge in Greek and implies an intuitive internal knowledge, which is equated with light. The Templars were Kabbalists, which according to 33rd degree Freemason Albert Pike, predates Judaism, and it is in this context that Lucifer is symbolic of divine spiritual light or wisdom and spiritual energy, known in the East as Chi or Prana, and in European and alchemical societies as real. Stanley Kubrick was an initiate into the ancient mysteries and would often reveal this guarded esoteric knowledge to the public through his films. Aliphas Levy, author of The Mysteries of Magic, who says, quote, What is more absurd and more impious than to attribute the name of Lucifer to the devil, that is, to personified evil, the intellectual Lucifer is a spirit of intelligence and love. It is the paraclete. It is the Holy Spirit. While the physical Lucifer is the great agent of universal magnetism. In her book, The Secret Doctrine, Helena Petrova Blavatsky says, quote, Lucifer represents life, thought, progress, civilization, liberty, independence. Lucifer is the Logos, the serpent, the Savior. Another 33rd degree Mason, Albert Pike, is quoted as saying, Lucifer is divine and terrestrial light, the Holy Ghost, and Satan, at one and the same time. In his book, Morals and Dogma, Albert Pike once again says, quote, Lucifer, the light bearer, strange and mysterious name to give to the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, the son of the morning, is it he who bears the light? and with its splendors, intolerable, blinds the feeble, sensual, or selfish souls, doubt it not. Another proponent of this line of thought is author and honorary 33-degree mason, Manly P. Hall, 
who goes on to say, quote, When the mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, and before he may step onwards and upwards, he must prove his ability to properly apply this energy. In Slavic folklore, the goddess sisters of the dawn are called Zoria or Zarya. They live in the palace of the sun, open the gate for him in the morning so that he can set off on a journey through the sky, and are also described as virgins. Associated with the color red, the goddess of the morning was linked with saffron and roses, which also embody the glowing hues of the dawn. The rose was also the primary symbol of the feminine archetype, the great goddess, and the soul. In the Gnostic and alchemical tradition with Sophia, or divine wisdom in Greek, the feminine aspect of God and the Holy Spirit. The Vatican regarded by millions as a symbol of Christianity. But what is the ancient history of this location in Italy? And what are the origins of its name? In actuality, the Vatican is neither Latin nor Greek, and it cannot be traced to the Bible either. While the word Vatican is associated with the Church, it predates Christianity and is closely linked to the Etruscan goddess Vatica. Located in Rome, the Vatican is a symbol of the Roman Catholic faith, and as a city-state was founded on February 11, 1929, as the world's smallest independent country by both population and area, with a population of around 840 and an area of about 108 acres, but with an influence over millions of people that span the globe. The Vatican has a pagan origin, and about 3,000 years ago, the Etruscans settled the region of central Italy, known as Etruria, and ruled that part of the Mediterranean before the rise of Rome. The Etruscan nobility were known as Rutuli or Rutulians, which means the red ones, with the meaning of the blonde ones. They were a legendary tribe, like the Phoenicians, which also means red in Greek, and the ancient Aryans, all of whom revered the swastika. The first kings of the Roman Empire were Etruscan, with many of them having blonde hair and blue or gray eyes. Of course, the Roman Empire famously had red shields, which incidentally is what Rothschild translates to in English, as they were the official bankers of the papacy, which is a covert continuation of the empire. Their capital city was about 20 miles southeast of modern Rome, and they allegedly used Rome as a burial and place of sorcery, divination, and other ritualistic activities associated with the mysteries. While most of the Etruscan literature and mythology has been lost, we do know that they built a large cemetery on a hillside slope outside their ancient city in the area that later became the city of Rome. And the guardian of this necropolis was the Etruscan goddess Vatica, goddess of the underworld, whose duty was to keep a watching eye on those who had passed away. It seems that the Etruscan beliefs about the afterlife were similar to those of ancient Egyptians, where treatment of the deceased remains was important for survival and a successful journey to the next life. According to Etruscan mythology, Vanth was a death demon that attended from the moment of death until entry to the underworld, usually depicted with wings and had bearded snakes entwined around her arm. In addition to being goddess of the underworld, Vatica was also a bitter-tasting grape used to make wine that grew on the slope. When people ate it, they experienced hallucinations, and a word passed on into Latin as a synonym for prophetic vision. The Latin word Vaticaner means foretell or prophecy, from vatis, poet, teacher, oracle. So while, according to the Catholic Encyclopedia, the origin of the name Vaticanus is uncertain, other sources claim that it comes from the ancient Etruscan language, and the Vatican Hill takes its name from the Latin word Vaticanus, 
alluding to the drug-induced oracles or fortune-teller priestesses which delivered their prophecy there in ancient times. The area which is now St. Peter's thus became known as Vatican Hill. Another proposed connection to the word Vatica relates to the tika or dot of jewelry Hindu women place on their forehead to indicate the third eye and corresponds to the pineal gland and also related to psychic phenomena, intuition, and the Hindu sixth chakra. In addition to melatonin, the pineal gland is thought to produce a molecule known as DMT, a powerful hallucinogen, and appears to be related to dreaming and near-death experiences. Taking artificial DMT like ayahuasca will absolutely open you up to being attacked and demon-possessed. Valhalla, an afterlife hall of the slain in Norse mythology. In Norse mythology, Hell is also the queen of the realm of the dead. And inside her hall, everything has names associated with misfortunes. For instance, her dining table is called hunger, and the knives are called starvation. In her bedroom, she has her bed called sick bed, encapsulated with curtains called misfortune. In Icelandic sagas, Hel is referred to as a daughter of Loki, described as half blue and half flesh-colored, and plays a key role in the attempted resurrection of the god Boulder. She's neither dead nor alive, but rather seems to be in between the two. Her name means hidden and refers to the dead whose souls are invisible to the living and she shares some parallels with the Etruscan goddess Vatica, goddess of the underworld, where the Vatican gets its name. The Etruscans did not bury their dead inside the walls of their cities. Instead, they built a large cemetery on a hillside slope outside of their ancient city in the area that later became the city of Rome. Vatica had several other related meanings in ancient Etruscan. The name was not only associated with the goddess of the underworld, but the word passed on into Latin as a synonym for a prophetic vision. The Latin word Vaticinor means foretell, prophecy, from vatis, meaning poet, teacher, or oracle. So while some argue that the word Vatican literally means divining serpent, even the word does not appear in the Bible. Keep in mind that divination was associated with the ancient goddess, which was also always affiliated with a serpent in pre-Christian times. It's ironic that the Gnostic trance-induced divination associated with the ancient mysteries were declared heretical by the Vatican and punishable by death, when the Vatican itself is literally named after the very location known as the ancient epicenter of oracle divination, sex magic, and drug-fueled orgies. Not to mention that the Roman Catholic Church was literally founded by the Gnostics, like Augustine, and is based in mysticism. So-called Christian mysticism which is an oxymoron originated in the Roman Catholic Church. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the second part of our documentary. Until next time, I am the Remnant Warrior asking you to please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share the video.